<laughs> Why? You must believe my brother's friends never let that down. Never let Oh, that yeah. Down. I'm sure. My mother was true. in the crowd watching me. <laughs> They're going to be talking about that forever. I guarantee Oh, yeah. For sure. A, B, C, D, E, F, U. All right. Starting at 9.9, .9, it is Kevin Begley, and I am joined on the air by Gail, who Hi. we're playing. <laughs> What's going on? What's up? What's happening? Thanks for doing this. We really appreciate it. Oh my God, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, we love your song, A, B, C, D, E, F, U. From the first second I heard it, I just, I was obsessed. It, it's so good. Thank you. And, and I have to say, thank you. I don't know if it was your decision, but thank you for making the Forget You version so that we could actually play it on the radio for everybody. But I encourage everyone to go listen to the real version really loud <laughs> in your car. Turn it up. Because even if you're not going through a breakup, it's it's just a whole feeling when you listen to it. It's great. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, and one person that I read that you were nervous to play it for was your grandmother for the first yes. time. God. I mean, it's so nerve wracking. Just like, <laughs> I don't know what she's going to think. What was her reaction when she first heard it? Oh my God. Well, actually she, what she said completely put the song in like a total different perspective for me is like, she said that, um, you got to say all the things at 17 that I never could. <laughs> um, and it was the same thing with like my mom, like, and specifically the ABC where it was like, I didn't want you to necessarily know the specific gender of the person that I was telling to F off. Um, but in the interviews, like it's about my ex-boyfriend. And so like with the perspective of a woman being openly angry at a man, like that wasn't necessarily something that was like going to be accepted like 20, 30 years ago, you know? And True, so like, yeah. that just put things in a different perspective of even to have this and to some other people, like to some people that's still jarring and offensive, you know? Yeah. Um, but I obviously didn't particularly see it in that way until I <laughs> something about it. And I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, that must have been great when you heard her say that. That's so fun. Mm, it was very sweet. It was very sweet of her. Um, now, you know, I saw the video, too, of you hearing your song on the radio for the first time. And mm -hmm. that reaction was so great. And you recently played The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and James Corden. Yes, I and, did James Corden yesterday. It was crazy. Yeah, it was, right. And so what's interesting to me is, you know, even with streaming and TikTok, which are all great, social media is so fun, but there's something different about, you know, playing a, a, a traditional TV show like The Tonight Show or hearing your song on the radio. Is there a different mm -hmm. feeling for you? Like you get, it's almost like you get a different sort of chills from that. Well, it's different, like compared to doing something live compared to recording, because when it's recorded, mm -hmm. there's things like crowd vocals and stacks and harmonies and all of that. And like, the goal is for it in some ways to be perfect like for every note to be perfect and like everything is very much so thought through but then when you're recording things especially when you're like on a live television show where it's like things aren't necessarily going to be perfect and like deciding on what you want to be perfect as much as perfect as you can make it and the other things you're willing to not be perfect and like also doing something that you know it's not gonna be perfect and thousands of people with the possibility yeah. and you're just like ah you know <laughs> and but, especially um, a, especially a song um, like that too that's you know super you, per, per, a personal meaning for yourself and but you're right it is sort of more raw when it's live it's, it's it so much fun cool. though i love it so much especially when it's like a crowd of people like that's always the fun it's always fun but when it's like the tv and all of that too it can be hard because it's just like a camera and you're just like uh, and then I'm also like yeah. a teenage girl like I'm insecure like I'm not sitting here being like I'm a baddie who sounds amazing like I fake it till you make it absolutely but I'm like yeah here's a camera right. I'm like, how do I look what do I what do I do I mean everybody you know anyone just thinking back to when they were 17 or you know a teenager you know to be in a position like that on tv is nerve-wracking for anybody but especially at that age oh my gosh and also like at um Jimmy Fallon, I accidentally talked about my mother's gag reflex on live television. <laughs> well, now I'm talking about it on the radio. I need to really stop talking about it. <laughs> but like, that's how you know I was nervous. Being like, and my mother has a really bad gag reflex. And <laughs> why? Well, you must believe. <laughs> why? Well, you must believe my brother's friends never let that down. Never let oh, that down. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Her mother was true. in the crowd watching me. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be talking about that forever, I guarantee. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, with the song, have you uh, have you talked to the ex, the mom, or the sister that you referenced in the lyrics no, since the song's blown up? The parents. No, I haven't, actually. I need to see if their, <laughs> their dad has unfollowed me on Instagram. I blocked him on everything, and so... <laughs> 
but I didn't block his dad because I hate his dad and I know he knows that I hate his dad. So the fact that I would block him and not his dad was my one little like and, and the dad isn't really referenced in the song, is he? No, no. And honestly, it's also just because it doesn't sound good. I actually don't like his dad more than I don't like his mom. But that's kind of a that's kind of a neat little thing because the fact that he's not in the song almost makes it even better that, that, yeah. that you didn't get you didn't get to be in the lyrics. <laughs> oh, he knows. He knows though. He knows. <laughs> now the song obviously, um, you know, you, you put it out and then it sort of blew up on TikTok. And I heard that it really got popular with the sign language community, which I find super yeah, fascinating. Yes. Yeah, I mean, like I was on TikTok and I just saw like more and more audios being made, uh, like more and more videos being made under that audio and all of it was sign language. And it was like, it was either people learning it for the video clip or as people teaching people because people are not learning it correctly for the audio clip. Yeah. <laughs> or even it, like, um, they started doing different languages inside of sign language because originally it started with ASL and then it started getting into like different um, types of languages inside of that. Um, and it was just, it was so crazy to watch in real time. Like, and then I also started kind of leaning into other trends that started kind of going around and breaking plates and flipping the camera off and, um, yeah, and then it just kind of grew. But for a really long time, literally, if you just looked in the audio, it was, like all, it was all sign language, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. That's something that's so unexpected. You know, you it, you know, you you picture people duetting the song or you know doing their own covers, but something well, like that yeah. just comes out of the blue. You know, especially when it was like such a um, like an f u song. I was trying to do a, yeah. anything to make people like I was with when I was trying to be like make a video to this audio. It was like to shit talk their ex. But yeah. then anything that like started the song to do what it did now is like literally just all sign language. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and you're from Dallas and then, you know, you mm -hmm. grew up in Nashville and uh, you're inspired by a lot of artists from previous generations, which I find interesting. Yeah. Was yeah. it just because that's what you listened to growing up? A little bit. I mean, it's really what my mom showed me. Like, my mom showed me Aretha Franklin. I absolutely fell in love with her. She showed me Joss Stone. Her voice is um, absolutely incredible. Oh, and then started yeah. going to Nashville, and I just started pe seeing people, like, play rounds, and that was also just really inspiring. I found Julia Michaels, and that was, like, so crazy. That was so exciting. Um, and, yeah, I mean, and then I found, like, Atlantis, Morissette. I found Joan Jett, Stevie Nicks, just kind of, like, these powerful badass rocker women um and even like cheryl crow like i actually just found her i should i should have found her a long time ago but she's so yeah. so amazing um so yeah i just started finding more and more music and even just like going on to different playlists and just finding songs of artists that i really like and it just started all sort of leaning into this one big inspiration of many art many artists yeah, it's crazy how that spans generations. You know, it doesn't matter what what year the music was from. It's sort of, it's almost like the attitude, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we just recently did International Women's Day where we played all female artists on the station all oh, day. Yes, yes, and yes. and we, we, we really saw that contrast because, you know, you'd play a Billie Eilish song and then you play a song from the 90s from Alanis. Like, it, it, and the, the, the feeling is still there, even though it's different generations, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, it's all, all so crazy. Also, like, what a great combo They even just like turn on the radio, listen to Billy, listen to Alanis. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, well, before I let you go, I want to do something kind of fun to, to end it with. So your, nice. so your TikTok handle is Gail can't spell. And nice. then A, B, C, D, E, F, U is obviously the beginning of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a name of an artist, another one name artist that we play on star. And it's going to be a little radio spelling bee. So you have to spell it. Okay. you ready. We're going to start easy. Don't worry. We're going to start easy. Pink. P I N K. No, P explanation point. N K. I tried to trick you on the first one, but you got it. Nice job. Okay, Adele. A D E L E. There you go. You're two for two. Now they get a little harder. Beyonce. B E Y O N C E. Yeah. Okay, two more. Eminem. E. Uh, wait, I have to literally E sign language. Um, oh God, E M E M I E N M E M E M E You got it. M M E M E N E M. 
so close. E M I N E M for Eminem. Okay. And yeah. la la last one's really hard. I I don't even get this one. Rihanna. Ooh. R I H. Wait. R H I A N N A. You had it the first time. R I H A N N A. <laughs> but nice job. Thanks for playing along. I appreciate it. Oh, that stressed me out. <laughs> Sorry, you did good though. <laughs> I tried. I tried my best. <laughs> all right, Gail. Thank you so much for talking to us. You know, congrats on all the success and uh, continued success with the, with all your music and your tour. And like I said, good luck with everything. And thank you so much for being on the air with us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.